مع حركة الدار هذيك اجوا على الدار هاي طبشوا الشباب هيك صاروا يولعوا في المناتوف ويزتوا في كلب في كلب الدار بس يعني لو الناس كلها ما جاتش يعني وهابوا شوي ورجعوا الدار يعني راحت شوي لهم بقولوا استشهد شاب هيو فوق طخوه لما انطخ الشاب يعني هديت الامور شوي طلع Israeli settler violence against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank has a long history dating back to 1967. But since 7th of October, it has surged to record levels. For decades, the Israeli government has failed to check and often tolerated such violence. Now, Hamas's attack on Israel has only fueled settlers' determination to take revenge and force Palestinians from their homes. So settler violence is kind of a catch-all phrase. It basically describes various ways in which Israeli civilians or citizens who live in occupied territory harm, disturb, terrorize, prevent access for Palestinians. Since 1967, almost without exception, consecutive Israeli governments have supported the settlement enterprise. The support has intensified under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government which has boosted Israel's settlement project and includes ministers representing the hardline elements within the settler movement. These officials condone and justify attacks on Palestinians. Even before 7th of October, 2023 was already the deadliest year for Palestinians in the West Bank. In the first half alone, there were 591 settler attacks against Palestinians, an average of 95 per month, or nearly three per day. From 7 October through August 2024, there have been over 1,000 settler attacks on Palestinians. It's important to note that settler violence, while it is its own phenomenon, is part and parcel with what the occupation is, which is state violence, which is all different kinds of ways in which the government and the army prevents Palestinians from living normal lives. So it could range from anything from preventing access to a road, which will lead to their agricultural land, to coming and assaulting them and beating them, to harassing them. Sometimes, settler violence is driven by revenge. In 2023, following incidents in which Palestinians shot and killed Israelis, Israeli settlers rampaged through the Palestinian villages of Hawara and Turmuz Aya. They destroyed property and terrorized residents, despite neither village being connected to the shootings that supposedly provoked these attacks. However, a more fundamental motive is to drive Palestinians off their land. In the past year, entire communities have been forcibly displaced by settlers. فبلشوا ضرب في الناس وبطح على الأرض وتكلبش وطلاق نار و... و... لم أخذ الهواية أخذ التلفونات عشان ما حد يصور ولا حد يثبت الحدث Palestinian Bedouin communities who rely on grazing for their livelihoods are especially vulnerable Settler cattle farmers frequently seize large areas of grazing land under the pretense of farming or herding establishing outposts these outposts, which are unauthorized by the Israeli state, severely restrict access for Bedouin herders and often provoke violent confrontations. كان صار في الظاهرة في على المستوى الوطني كاملة من جنين ل لعراد ل ل ل من الشمال الضف إلى جنوب الضف ظاهرة الاستيطان الرعوي هاي ال ال السياسي سياسي إسرائيلي بيجيبوا المستوطن وبحط إيده على على آلاف ال ال الكيلوات ال ال الدونمات لما يتعدى المستوطن إحنا بنتصل على الشرطة وبتصل على الجيش بعدين مع شديد الأسف بكون نهاية المطاف الاثنين فاز على المستوطن Settler violence also targets Palestinian agriculture, 
settlers often destroy crops, uproot trees, and damage farming equipment, inflicting significant economic losses on Palestinian farmers. See, they come through here. Look how they bend the, the fence, and they come through there. Uh, they are very dangerous. If you try to do something to them, they kill you. I'm surrounded uh, over this area, surrounded by uh, five to six settlements. This settlement, it's been over 15, 20 years. They cut uh, the trees, maybe more than uh, 200 trees they cut for me. And not just one time. They keep doing it and doing it and doing it. They have the well over here. They damage it. I try to put the fence. They stole it. Then I bought it again. They cut it. Then I bought it again. And they keep uh, damaging it. Though senior Israeli security officials have condemned egregious incidents, the Israeli Defense Forces, or IDF, often overlook this violence. Settlers, many of whom now serve as reservists with weapons and uniforms provided by the army, have gained more influence within the security forces. Soldiers increasingly come from West Bank settlements and often are trained in national religious camps. And in general, pro-violence views are growing among younger Israelis in mandatory service. The IDF, primarily its duty in the occupied territory in practice is to protect Jewish Israelis from terror and to protect settlers in general. Under international law, under the belligerent occupation, they are supposed to protect the Palestinian as the occupied population. In practice, they don't do that. So we've actually seen more and more cases over the years of uh, soldiers not only not doing anything when settlers uh, harm Palestinians, but actually supporting and protecting them from anything that could possibly happen and, and uh, ensuring that settlers are fine while the Palestinians are harmed. So the IDF really not only doesn't do anything about it, it actually sometimes also actively supports settlers. The police, which is uh, far, far less resourced and has much less people on the ground, in certain cases might show up and try to talk to the Palestinians and take a testimony, but in most cases, not even that happens. The majority of settlers claim that the term settler violence is derogatory, meant to defame all settlers as violent. Some, however, justify the violence as part of what they consider a necessary battle, a conflict over land. If you ask settler leaders, uh, community leaders about settler violence, they'll tell you it's a very, very small number of people who are acting like anarchists, and for the most part, it doesn't really exist as a phenomenon. Um, but uh, when you look at the phenomenon of settler violence, what you see is that settlers are basically trying to take over land. And the best way for them to take over land is to intimidate and harass Palestinians in ways that might not even be that explicit or active, but that in ultimately lead Palestinians to live in fear, to have their economies and their livelihoods disturbed, and, and in which case they will oftentimes try to leave their, their homes. Settler violence is rendering the possibility of a just and durable solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict further from reach. It is enabling further Israeli takeover of occupied land fueling Palestinian militancy and increasing the likelihood of a larger outbreak of violence, while decreasing prospects for Palestinian political renewal. Despite these dangers, Western powers have been reluctant to take stronger action. Sanctions that the US and European countries have imposed on some violent settlers are a step forward, but fall short of addressing the root of the problem. Doing so would require a sustained unified commitment from foreign powers. Without concerted action, Israel's annexation of the West Bank and the accompanying bloodshed will accelerate, not only harming Palestinians, but potentially creating yet another front in an expanding regional war.